Smithing has been one of the most boring and neglected skills in old school RuneScape for a very long time. While Jagex knew this, they also knew that the community would vehemently oppose a smithing rework like that in RuneScape 3. Their solution was the Giant's Foundry. This is an engaging smithing minigame that sees you smithing massive blades for the Giants to teach them about their past as smiths. It offers decent experience rates and a new smithing outfit that really helps with anvil training. So without further ado, let's talk about the Giant's Foundry minigame. Giant's Foundry Requirements Participating in the Giant's Foundry minigame requires you to complete the short introductory quest, Sleeping Giants. The quest itself requires level 15 smithing as well as a small handful of common items. In addition to this, you'll need a smithing level high enough to smelt the materials you'll be using. This means you'll need level 30 smithing for steel, 50 for mithril, 70 for adamantite, and 85 for runite. This also applies to melting down armor and weapons, so if you're an Iron Man or if you're using this activity to gain extra experience after anvil training, keep that in mind. Getting to the Giant's Foundry There are a handful of effective ways to get to the Giant's Foundry. Luckily, once you get there, you can stay for a long time, so it's alright if it takes you a little longer to get there as there's not a lot of running back and forth. The grouping teleport to the Giant's Foundry is fairly quick and accessible even if you haven't started the quest yet. The Amulet of Glory teleport to al Karid takes you just west of the Giant's plateau where you can enter the Giant's Foundry cave, and another option is the Ring of Dueling, which can teleport you to the PvP arena, where you'll then have to run south and then east and go into the cave. If you don't have access to those pieces of jewelry for whatever reason and you've yet to complete the quest, just gather the items required for the quest and use the grouping teleport. You'll teleport directly next to a giant with a left click option to strike him. Click this, agree to start the quest, and he'll take you inside the cave. If you've already completed the quest, feel free to skip to the section titled Smithing Giant Swords. Completing the quest. The only requirements to start this quest are to be on a member's account and to have at least level 15 smithing. To complete the quest, you'll need three oak logs, one piece of wool, not a ball of wool, ten nails of any kind, 20 free inventory spaces after using the items mentioned before, either a hammer or mkando hammer, note only smithing hammers will work, a chisel, and finally ice gloves, or a bucket of water if you don't have those yet. As mentioned before, the first step is to start the quest by simply attempting to strike the giant outside the cave. Then he'll let you inside the cave and ask you to help him repair some equipment so that the giants can remember how to create tools and weapons. You'll first repair the broken polishing wheel, then a broken grindstone, and finally, the broken trip hammer. Once you've repaired all three tools, talk to Kovac. He'll ask you if you're ready to make the sword. Then talk to him again and he'll ask you to pull items out of his crate. You'll need 20 free inventory spaces to do this. The rest of this quest is just a simplified version of the minigame itself, so let's move on to the section about smithing giant swords. Smithing giant swords. In the Giant's Foundry minigame, there are three main aspects of your sword at any given moment. Quality, temperature, and progress. The quality has a starting value based on the materials you put in as well as the molds you use, but it can decrease if you make a mistake. The temperature will be changing constantly throughout the crafting of the sword, both up and down depending on what you're doing. The progress will only go forward, but note that failing to move on to the correct step can harm the quality of the sword and thus the rewards. There are five places you'll take the sword between grabbing it from the mold and submitting it to Kovac. They are the lava pool, the waterfall, the trip hammer, the grindstone, and finally the polishing wheel. The lava pool and waterfall are useful for increasing and decreasing the temperature of the preform, which you'll need to do quite regularly. Both of these can be left-clicked for a slow temperature change, or right-clicked for the dunk or quench options, which change the temperature of the sword much more quickly. Using the trip hammer will progress the sword if your progress bar is in the red zone, the grindstone corresponds to the yellow zones, and the polishing wheel for the green zones. The sword will have to be in the red temperature zone to use the trip hammer, the yellow temperature zone to use the grindstone, and the green green temperature zone to use the polishing wheel. Also, it's useful to note that the trip hammer and polishing wheel gradually decrease the temperature of your sword while using them, while the grindstone increases it. The temperature of your preform also decreases very slowly over time when you're standing still. The first thing you'll need to do is ask Kovac for a commission. He'll tell you what type of sword he wants, denoted by two adjectives. This might be light and flat, or heavy and spiked, for example. Then you'll go to set up your mold. You want to select mold parts for the fort, blade, and tip of the sword that have the highest combined value of the two aspects you're aiming for. The totals will show up in the top left, and your goal is to maximize the sum of these two numbers. 
This is what buying molds will help you to do, which will increase the quality of your swords and thus the points and experience you can earn for each sword. Next, you'll grab your bars or items from the bank and stick them into the crucible. Once it's filled with the equivalent of 28 metal bars, you can pour it into your mold and run down to the mold. If you have ice gloves, simply left click on the poured preform and you're ready to begin. The next thing you'll usually want to do is take the preform to the waterfall. Use the waterfall to cool it until the temperature's in the red zone, then go to the trip hammer. Use the trip hammer until the temperature's at the bottom of the red zone and dunk it in the lava pool for a few seconds. Then continue using the trip hammer until the progress leaves the red zone. Repeat this process for whatever zone you're currently in, remembering to use the proper tool for each zone and controlling the temperature effectively. It's recommended to start the green and red zones with temperatures near the top of the corresponding range, while starting the yellow zone near the bottom of its temperature range. Once the progress bar has reached the end, you can turn in the blade to Kovac for your reward. However, if you ruin the sword by taking the quality meter all the way to the left, you'll be forced to submit your ruined blade, which will allow you to start a new one. If you ever want to leave without completing your preform, there's a storage rack on the northern end of the room. If you simply leave, it'll appear there, so if you want to come back and wonder where your sword went, that's probably where it is. Which materials should you use? The materials you'll use for the activity are totally up to you. However, mixtures of 14 of one material and 14 of another, known as alloys, seem to do the best across the board. When using smithed items like weapons and armors, note that you cannot use black, white, dragon, or trimmed equipment because they cannot be smithed. You also cannot use items smithed using a single bar such as daggers, arrows, tips and med helms. You can use any item that can be smithed with two or more regular bars, or you can use the bars themselves. As previously mentioned, using any material will require the smithing level required to smelt that bar. To use 14 steel and 14 mithril, that's level 50. For 14 mithril and 14 adamantite, that's 70. And to use 14 adamantite and 14 runite, that's 85 smithing. These are also the three combinations I think you should consider when running the minigame, as the steel and mithril combo is profitable, the mithril and adamantite combo is cheap and provides a good amount of experience, and finally the adamantite and runite combo, while costly, offers the best experience available in the minigame. I personally used mithril and adamantite for about 200 giant swords, and I found that I could gain much more experience than advertised. Smithing Experience Rates According to the patch notes Jagex released regarding the minigame, steel and mithril swords should grant about 135,000 experience per hour. The Mithril and Adamantite alloy should be good for about 195,000 experience per hour, and the highest quality alloy, Runite and Adamantite, should be worth about 276,000 experience per hour. However, with all of the optimal molds and full smiths, I was able to achieve over 190,000 experience per hour with the Steel and Mithril alloy, and over 240,000 experience per hour with the Mithril and Adamantite alloy. The advertised experience rates of the highest level alloy did seem to match what I was able to achieve, which was about 267,000 experience per hour. Helpful Rune Light Plugins the Easy Giants Foundry plugin can make the entire process simpler and easier, especially if you've never played the minigame. It will pretty much highlight the exact steps you need to take in the minigame so it becomes very easy. It even shows the number of actions required to move to the next stage of the sword, and how many actions you can take before gaining or losing too much heat. Optimal Reward Order In my experience, buying all the molds first is a great move if you want to increase the experience and points you'll receive from the minigame. These charts from the wiki show the optimal order of unlocking the molds for maximum points. One is for smithing levels from 71 to 78, and the other one is for levels 79 or higher. The only molds which are not optimal in at least one commission scenario are the Juggernaut Fort and the Corrupted Point, so you can avoid buying these altogether to save points for the smith's outfit. Here's a chart featuring the smithing requirements and other information on each mold part. The smith's outfit is the most significant reward offered in the minigame, as it has effects within the minigame as well as outside. In the minigame, each piece has a 20% chance to grant more progress on your preform with each action on the tools. The full set guarantees this effect. Similarly, each piece has a chance to speed up anvil smithing actions by one tick, and the full set guarantees this as well. So, when making adamant plate bodies, for example, it turns the 5 tick action into a 4 tick action. This speeds up your training by about 20%, offering a very compelling method of obtaining 99 smithing without breaking the bank. 
I've personally been able to achieve over 280,000 smithing experience per hour making adamant plate bodies, which is great for a method frequently costing between 0 and 2 GP per XP. The optimal order to purchase the smith's outfit is by buying the gloves and boots first, then the tunic and trousers afterward. This is because unlike other skilling outfits, each piece offers the exact same benefits. The gloves, however, can also be combined with the ice gloves to create the smith's gloves eye, which carry the effects of both items. There are a handful of other items available in the foundry reputation shop. The double ammo mold allows you to make eight cannonballs at a time, doubling the speed at which you can make them. Kovac's grog offers a temporary plus four smithing boost. The smithing catalyst is a consumable item that halves the amount of coal needed for smelting, as well as doubling the experience gained. The experience boost effect works at the blast furnace, but the coal needed will not be decreased further. There is the Colossal Blade, which is a very cool weapon that might be useful for 60 attack peers, and finally the Ore Pack, which simply contains a random assortment of ores from coal to runite weighted heavily towards coal. If you have leftover points and want to make the most GP possible from them, buying Kovacs Grogs and selling them on the Grand Exchange will earn you the most gold. These currently offer about 9 9 times more GP per reputation point than buying ore packs and opening them. Well, that just about wraps up my guide on the Giant's Foundry. I hope you are able to find it helpful, and if so, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like on the video and subscribed for more guides like this one. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.